Get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also a great newsletter in Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters, and you're going to see Mastering Probability right on your right-hand side. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You get it for six months or $6.95, which is the savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So you can come over, get the newsletter. You'll have a great newsletter for a month. If it doesn't work for you on the 28th day, just cancel the newsletter. Sometimes they work for folks. Sometimes they don't. That being said, when you get... The newsletter, Steve has a huge amount of archives on there explaining how he looks at the market. So you're going to get an education that's phenomenal, okay? And then you have the choice about keeping the letter or not keeping the letter. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I heard you talking about Tesla, and so I just pulled up the charts. I haven't looked at the uh, stock for a while. And actually, Tom, two weeks ago, it confirmed a weekly A to B equals CD to the downside. That gives us a one-to-one -one price projection of 107. So the, pretty the heavy, huh? Yeah, the, the monthly, I don't know that we have enough days left in the month out here. So the monthly swing point had 1.9 billion, and okay. right now we're at about 1.3.5 or so. So I don't know yeah, if there's enough, enough trading right. days, you know. I I'm mean, it does you. about a million, 100 million shares a day. I just don't think it's going to be enough to get there. But still, um, yeah, this thing is below all profile levels, daily, weekly, monthly. It confirmed weekly A to B equals CD to the downside. So, uh, you know, and it's at 168 right now. If it does get to that 107 level or lower like you were taking a look at, I think maybe you were looking at some volume or a swing point or what have you. Uh, yeah, I was looking at the last time I had volume on the way up. Isn't it amazing when you think about it, though? Like, it's like totally it's so wild, folks, OK, that, you know, unfortunately, the shareholders the are asleep at the switch, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the word, unfortunately, because, you know, it looks like, and, and I mean, that's still in, uh, a significant way down percentage-wise yeah. from where we're trading right now, yeah. right? I know. <laughs> Unreal. Seriously, man. <laughs> Absolutely. So last time, last week when we were together, we were talking about um, whether or not the, the we, we're trying to answer the question, have we, become, have we begun a new ball market? And uh, my answer was no. And the reason that my answer was no is because we take a look at this chart, the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000, they continue to trade within their descending price channels out there. So we can see over on the uh, uh, lower left out here, it's only the Dow that has broken through that price channel. The Dow's break of that price channel is confirming for me that global capital is flowing back to the uh, big uh, cap stocks out there. And as we take a look at the Dow here, so this is a really cool chart because this allows us to take a look at the Dow price in any other major currencies. So the left-hand side is the Dow price in dollars. Next to that is the Dow in euros, then Dow priced in yen, and Dow in pounds. Now, this is a quarterly time frame here, and we can see that the Dow price in those three currencies has made new all-time highs well after the uh, Dow priced in U.S. dollars has made its high out there. So it is not a bear market at all if you're trading the Dow and you're over in uh, Europe, whether in the U.K. or just the rest of Europe in euros or whether you're in uh, Japan. Uh, right now trading uh, the Dow. And that's really important to understand. And it's this global flow of capital that will eventually take the Dow priced in dollars to a new all-time high. But the key here is eventually. That doesn't mean that it happens tomorrow or the next day. And when we take a look at the weekly Rhodesman to Indicator bottom patterns, we took a look at this last week, and, and this is one of the uh, archives and one of the great tools that uh, is included in a newsletter subscription out there. So if you're interested in learning this pattern, and you should want to learn this pattern because it works on all time frames, all instruments, these are the cash, uh, da, uh, cash uh, uh, indice charts out there, uh, generating weekly Rhodes Mintum Indicator Bottoms is a real good signal of a of a potential bottom that is out there. So, which was the reason why we're entertaining, have we become a, a new bull market? Now, this table here, Tom, this looks at the performance of the instruments that we've got out here okay. for all of 22, and then since our last bottom, which was October 13th, inside the market. And so, if we take a look, if we kind of go from the right to the left, the second row 
Uh, second column, I should say, from the uh, right shows the rate of change over the one year, over the last year, during the last year. Not 12 months, but since uh, yes. January 1st, first, first trading day of the year. And here I've got the, so if you, if you don't, you know, if the charts didn't make sense to you and math makes sense to you, you can see that the Dow priced in euros for the year is up 3%. Or around three percent, nearly fifteen percent priced in yen, six and a half percent priced in pounds out there, and off seven percent in U.S. dollars. If we take a look at the performance of the S&P, the Nasdaq, and the Russell during the year, you can see the Dow has held up much, much better. Again, another sign and indication that global capital is flowing into the uh, large cap stocks out there, and it's the reason why we really want to pay attention to try to identify when that next bottom comes in and when global flow of capital is really coming into all the U.S. instruments. We can see here the U.S. dollar index. Your king out there has performed very well, up 13 percent uh, for the uh, year. And I'm in your boat. It, I, the Dow is trading up into some resistance levels. And if it takes it out, it says we're headed higher. So I, I my inclination is that that's what the dollar is going to do. We can see gold here off about 5 percent. Of course, lights we crude, the big winner out there, up 31 percent for the year. So this table looks at that performance. And the Dow is held up much better than the S&P, the Nasdaq and the uh, Russell. So in summary, Understanding how instruments are trading in the major currencies is going to be critical from this time forward because a real bull market, and this is again is the Dow down to the bottom right here, uh, is one where the instrument is rising in all major currencies out there. And when it comes to the U.S. dollar, you talked about that, both gold and the Dow pretty much have an inverse relationship. So the bottom portion of this chart is our correlation tool. This is looking at, on the left side, gold versus the dollar. On the right side, the Dow versus the dollar. When the bars are below zero, and this is set for a, a five-day average, when the bars are below zero, it tells us we have a directional correlation on average during a five-day five period of time. So I anticipate that when the global flow of capital is really in full steam mode, and we sort of saw this, Tom, uh, coming off of that October 13th uh, uh, bottom out here, we saw both gold and the U.S. equity markets move higher. And so that's what I expect we will see take place this time around when that global flow of capital is here in the uh, U.S. So it's already here. Is it in full force? I don't think it's in full force because when it is, we'll see gold and the U.S. markets move higher. And that means that the correlation bars that are at the bottom of the screen, they'll all be above zero versus those uh, below zero out there. So. And what I want to do is, you know, is I never really tell folks what's included with the newsletter. As you said, nice. there are gargantuan amount of, uh, of training and education that is out there. Each afternoon, uh, folks, I send out a end of day report. That end of day report is taking a look at the index ETFs along with each of the sectors inside the S&P 500. So part of the newsletter is to teach someone how to read the charts, what the tools are that I have on the charts. Uh, this is providing us with market profile information. It's providing us uh, with uh, support and resistance uh, levels. Uh, here are the other set of charts for the other sectors inside the S&P 500. These charts show exactly what the indices are doing. So I provide weekly, daily, monthly, uh, yearly charts for folks to uh, take a look at. And also included are these different tables. So this happens to be a table that is just for the Dow 30 stocks. If you wanted to know what the current, what I think the current market outlook is for each, it listed out there right there. So Dow Chemical is in a breakout bullish mode for its daily time frame. It's consolidating on a monthly and the uh, uh, on a weekly chart and the monthly chart says the uh, bull move is over out there. So uh, you get all this great information that helps you understand where support, resistance is and exactly where we're at with regard to the patterns. And folks, so you just saw this, right? And if you're in the car, remember it's archived because it's a phenomenal newsletter. There's a phenomenal amount of information out there and you'll learn it. It's real simple. Get over there right now. Steve, you have a if great one. Safe one. Look forward to speaking tomorrow. You too. Thank you.